Okay, listen. So today we are going to discuss about the lesson will be known as called atomic structure. In atomic structure, the today's concept will be Bohr's atomic theory. Bohr's atomic theory for hydrogen atom. Now today's concept will be Bohr's atomic theory for hydrogen atom. Now, if you go to the Bohr's atomic theory, the scientist will be known as called Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr proposed some postulates to explain the structure of hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom. So here he proposed some postulates in order to explain the structure of hydrogen atom. So according to the Niels Bohr, what are the points are going to consider? What are the important postulates means? Sir? The number one will be known as called the electrons. The electrons in an atom of hydrogen hydrogen revolve revolve around the nucleus the electrons in an atom of hydrogen revolve around the nucleus in circular path circular path called orbits orbits circular path called orbits they are indicated by they are indicated by k l m n are also called 1 2 3 4 and so on indicated by these are called these called principal okay not necessary indicated by the orbits indicator by symbol will be as called n so they are indicated by the values k l m like that that is about the second one As long as, as long as electron revolve in the same orbit, same orbit, energy of electron, energy of electron remains same energy of electron remains the same hence these orbits these orbits called stationary cells stationary cells or
energy levels. These are known as called stationary cells or may be called energy levels. The third one. Electrons may jump from electrons may jump from higher energy level to lower energy level or lower energy level to lower energy level to higher energy level higher energy level so that means here electron may jump from higher energy level to lower energy level or lower energy level to higher energy level that means here the delta E will be going to given as called as the energy difference E2 minus E1. E2 will be known as called higher energy level E1. Then we know that delta E is equal to H nu. Then we are having called H nu is equal to E2 minus E1. Then nu is equal to E2 minus E1 by H. This is about called as the frequency of energy difference between two levels. Now the number one last point will be known as called that is about as long as electron as long as electron revolve in the same orbit same orbit its angular momentum its angular momentum is Integral, integral, multiple of h by 2 pi. Its angular momentum will be integral multiple of h by 2 pi. That will be going to be as called m v r is equal to n h by 2 pi. m v r is equal to n h by 2 pi. So this is the postulates are going to be given by the Niels Bohr in order to explain the structure of atom. According to him, what is going on means the structure will be known as called. Now it will be called as a nucleus. Around nucleus we are having the cells will be there. What are the cells means nothing but called. One, two, three, And four. That means uh, this will be called as a nucleus, and this will be known as called N is equal to one, two, three, four, or it will be called K L M N like that. So the electron may be going to revolve around the nucleus in a fixed radius of fixed pause. These are known as called stationary cells as well as called as the energy levels. As long as electron, as long as electron revolves in the same orbit, energy will be remains uh, same. Here, electron may be jump from higher energy level to lower energy level. That will be called by releasing of energy. Similarly, electron may be promoted from lower energy level to higher energy level by taking off energy. So that will be going to, by this, uh, the energy levels are going to fix it. That will be known as called delta E is equal to E2 minus E1. Now, delta E is equal to, know that H nu photon, then H nu is equal to E2 minus E1, nu is equal to, you can write called E2 minus E1 by H. Nu is equal to E2 minus E1 by H. Here, as long as the electron revolves in the same orbit, its angular momentum is an integral multiple of H pi. Its angular momentum is equal to an integral multiple of H pi, which is going to be given as called MVR is equal to NH by 2 pi. MVR is equal to NH by 2 pi. So, this is about what is information according to the, the postulates proposed by the Niels Bohr in order to explain the structure of hydrogen atom. Here, hydrogen atom is said to be called as a single electron atom. Hydrogen atom is a single electron atom which is going to applicable to this only of single electron atoms only. So, this is about the important postulates of 
बोस अटॉमिक थ्योरी पर हाइड्रोजन एटम ओके We are going to discuss about after the information regarding to the postulates of Bohr's atomic theory. We are now entering into this. The next one will be known as called equation for equation for radius of radius of orbit for hydrogen atom. Yeah, this is about the next one. From this, we are getting some questions regarding to this numerical part based on this radius of orbit. Here, if you go to the radius of orbit, we are going to be concerned about here. So, electron present in certain orbit, electron present in certain orbit, the electron revolve around the nucleus, the electron revolve. Around the nucleus in a particular orbit, particular orbit, orbit. The electron is. attracted by nucleus due to electrostatic force electrostatic force which is going to given as called minus e square by r square which is going to given as called minus e square by r square so which is going to towards the nucleus then there is another one will be known as called on electron this is called away from nucleus centrifugal force present which is equal to minus mv square by r <clears throat> these are the two forces are going to operated over the electron one will be called as a towards the nucleus second one will be called away from the nucleus here the electron to be stationary in a given orbit given orbit that is about electrostatic force must be equal to electrostatic force which is called coulomb's law according to coulomb's law is equal to centrifugal force so both forces must be equal that will be as called minus e square by r square is equal to minus mv square by r Minus e square by r square is equal to minus m v square by r. Now here, so in both the cases, so negative and negative will be gets cancelled. Then r square r r will be cancelled, giving rise to e square by r is equal to we have an equation m v square. E square by r is equal to m v square. So this is about the equation is going to coming by the combination of what? That is called as a when the electrostatic force must be equal to the centrifugal force. We are getting an equation E square by R is equal to m v square. Now we know that that is a the Bohr postulates. The Bohr postulate of angular momentum. Angular momentum. In an orbit, 
angular momentum in R beam that is called MVR is equal to NH by 2 pi. MVR is equal to NH by 2 pi. So this thing can be written as called V is equal to NH by 2 pi MR. You can write it. Now the squaring on both sides it will be equal to V square is equal to N square h square then 2 will become a square 2 square means 4 pi square m square r square now this is called so now i am taking this will be equation 1 2 let us take this will be called 3 and this will be going to called 4 now here from equation 3 and 4 what you can write substitute the v square value in this equation we are getting e square by r is equal to what you can write m into let us test v square can be written as called n square h square by 4 pi square m square r square now this equation can be written as called on rearrangement r square by r is equal to this r square comes to here r square by r is equal to then m and m square gets cancelled then you can write n square h square divided by 4 pi square m e power 2 then after we have nothing but called r then you can write then r n is equal to radius of orbit r n is equal to n square h square by you can write called 4 pi square m e to the power of 2 this is about the equation for radius for a hydrogen atom for hydrogen atom in this by the substitution of Planck's constant, radian pi, mass of electron, charge of electron, we are getting a value Rn is equal to 0 0.529 into n square angstroms. By the substitution of the data, we are getting a value will be called Rn is equal to 0 0.529 n square. This equation corresponding to the hydrogen atom. This equation corresponding to the hydrogen atom. But here the generalized equation will be there that is called as a fair hydrogen like ions that will be known as called HE plus Li plus 2 BE plus 3 like that. That equation will be known as called Rn is equal to 0 0.529 into N square by J Armstrong. So J is known as called atomic number. You can take this is the equation. It is generalized equation Rn is equal to 0 0.529 into N square by Z angstroms. So this is about the equation for what? Radius. Let's see once again. Equation of radius of orbit for hydrogen atom. The electron revolve around the nucleus in a particular orbit. The electron is attracted by the nucleus due to what? Centrifugal forces which is equal to minus E square by R square. E will be known as called charge of electron. R will be radius of R. Then on other hand, electron is going to having centrifugal force which is called as a away from the nucleus. That force is present that is equal to minus mv square by R. Now here, the electron to be stationary in a given orbit, the both forces must be equal. That is called electrostatic force must be equal to the centrifugal force. That is given as called minus e square by r square is equal to minus mv square by r. This equation on environment we are getting called e square by r is equal to mv square. You have to remember this equation which is used in the next energy factor. The next one, the both baskets for angular momentum in an orbit given as called MVR is equal to NH by 2 pi. This equation on rearrangement we are getting V is equal to NH by 2 pi MR. On squaring on both sides, V square is equal to N square S square by 4 pi square M R square. Now the, from equation 3, 4, substitution of the V square value in equation 3, we are getting a radius of orbit will be known as called N square S square by 4 pi square M E square. Now by substitution of Planck's constant h value, pi will be equal to 3.14, m will be mass of electron, e will be charge of electron, we are getting a radius equation is known as called Rn is equal to 0 0.529 into n square angstrom. This will be important which is used for calculation point of view. Another one will be known as called what is the electrostatic force equation? This will be direct class in examination. Another one will be called centrifugal force. The remaining derivation will be not needed for J mains as well as called M set. But these things will be direct class through. But final equation will be most important for solving the numericals. So this is about the equation for what? Radius of the orbit. Okay. 
Now we are going to take the next one will be known as called energy of orbit. Now after the completion of the equation for radius, I am writing the radius equation will be known as called, I am writing up here. R n is equal to m square h square by 4 pi square m e square. So you remember this equation. This is the final equation for radius which are derived earlier for a hydrogen atom. Now we are using the next one will be known as called equation for energy of orbit. Equation for energy of orbit of hydrogen atom. Of hydrogen atom. So let us go to the, the next one. Equation for energy. Now here, in order to get energy of orbit of hydrogen, the total energy, the total energy E is equal to, we are getting from two energies, one will be known as called potential energy, potential energy plus kinetic energy. The sum of the potential and kinetic energy will be known as called total energy of orbit. Now here the potential energy is the potential energy is is equal to minus e square by r. The potential energy equal to minus e square by r. Now the, the kinetic energy is equal to the kinetic energy is equal to half m v square half m v square. Now this can be written as called 1 by 2 e square by r. So how we are getting means here in the radius equation we are getting called m v square is equal to e square by r which is derived in radius equation m v square is equal to e square by r which is derived in radius equation. Now by this we are getting it will be equal to minus 1 by 2 e square by r. Now total energy is equal to total energy E is equal to what you can write potential energy plus kinetic energy. I am writing called as a kinetic energy that is called minus E square by R plus 1 by 2 E square by R then minus will be more E square by R will be taken as common by getting called E is equal to minus E square by 2R minus E square by 2R this is about the equation minus e square by 2 r. Now here we know the equation for radius. Then I am writing called as a 1 radius r n is equal to 1 second d here is called. Now it will be taken as called 1 and this will be going to take as called 2 and this will be called 3. Now the equation for radius r n is equal to n square h square by 4 pi square m e to the power of 2 e to the power of 2. This is about the equation for radius. Equation for radius. Now, from equation 3 and 4, from equations 3 and 4, so substitute the value of R in the above equation we are getting called E is equal to, what we are getting? E is equal to, or maybe called I am getting E n is equal to radius of orbit is equal to minus e square by you can write 2 into e square by r 2 into you can write called simply n square h square by 4 pi square m e to the power of 2 this on rearrangement we are getting called e n is equal to minus 4 pi square e to the power of 4 pi square m e to the power of 4 divided by 2 into n square h square then this can be written as called e n is equal to minus 2 pi square m e to the power of 4 by n square h square n square h square 
So then by substitution of these values of pi, mass of electron charge and Planck's constant, we are getting a value En is equal to minus 2.18 into 10 to the power of minus 18 by n square. 18 by n square it will be of joules. It will be of joules. Or by the substitution of the data in different units we are having En is equal to minus 13.6 by n square electron volt per atom. Electron volt per atom. Then some more equations we are having one is called En is equal to that is about minus 313.6 by n square kilo calorie per mole. There is another equation. Then we have another one En is equal to minus 1312 by n square kilojoules per mole. So like this we are having various units of energies we are using. Out of these the most frequently used one will be called in terms of joules as well as called electron volts the commonly used one. Now here this is about called as our hydrogen atom. This is for what? Hydrogen atom. But more generalized equation one has called for hydrogen like species. What are the species we are taking once again? HE plus Li plus 2, Be plus 3 and so on. That means here yeah, one electron containing species the equation will be known as called En is equal to what you can write? En is equal to I am taking this one minus 2.18 into 10 to the power of minus 18 divided by n square into z square. This is about the equation corresponding to the hydrogen like species. Known as called the equation for energy of orbit of hydrogen atom. So, this is about the information according to this uh, what will be known as called the equation for energy. Then, from the equation for energy, we are going to get the information according to the that is about spectral lines of hydrogen atom. That is about the next one. Now, after the completion of the equation for energy of orbit of hydrogen atom, we are going to take the next one will be known as called limitations of Bohr's atomic theory. So, what are the important limitations of Bohr's atomic theory means here if you go to the the first one will be known as called the first one Bohr's theory unable to explain unable to explain the spectra of multi electron species spectra of multi electron species it is applicable it is applicable to only one electron containing one electron containing one electron containing hydrogen and hydrogen like hydrogen like species. So here Bohr's theory is unable to explain the spectra of our multi electron species. It is applicable to only one electron containing hydrogen and hydrogen like species like He plus Li plus 2 
B plus 3 and so on. That is about the first important limitation of Bohr's atomic theory. The second one, Bohr's theory unable to explain fine structure. Unable to explain fine structure of atom. So what do you mean by fine structure means God? When the atomic spectrum is going to be recorded by using high resolving spectrometer, when atomic spectrum is going to be recorded as called high resolving spectrometer, influence of external electric field is called Stark effect. The splitting of spectral lines under the influence of external electric field is called Stark effect. It is not explained by Bohr's theory. So Bohr's theory unable to explain Stark effect. Then the next one will be known as called splitting of spectral lines under the influence of external magnetic field is called Z1 effect it is also not explained by both theory. So the last one will be known as called how chemical bonds form between atoms between atoms unable to explain unable to explain why Bohr's theory. So these are the important drawbacks of Bohr's atomic theory. So what are the important drawbacks means is called Bohr's theory unable to explain the spectra of multi electron spaces. It is applicable to only one electron containing hydrogen and hydrogen like spaces like H2 plus Li plus 2 Be plus 3. Bohr's theory unable to explain the fine structure of atom. What do you mean by fine structure means the splitting of spectral lines under the resolved spectrometer. When you use resolving spectrometer, each line will be going to find as a group of lines. That structure will be known as called fine structure, which is unable to explain by the Bohr's theory. The next one will be Bohr's theory unable to explain the G1 as well as called Stark effect. The Stark effect is known as called splitting of spectral lines under the influence of external electric field is called Stark effect. And the splitting of spectral lines under the influence of external magnetic field is known as called Z1 effect. Both the things is done to unable to explain by Bohr's atomic theory. Here, however, Bohr's theory is unable to explain the formation of chemical bonds between atoms. How the bonds will be formed between atoms is also unable to explain by the Bohr's theory. So these are the important limitations of Bohr's atomic theory. Now we are going to take the next one will be known as called
the next one bohr's explanation on line spectrum of hydrogen atom here if you go to the the next one will be called bohr's explanation on line spectrum of hydrogen atom here according to bohr he is going to explain the how the lines will be formed between energy levels of hydrogen atom in series called he is going to consider about the energy of difference between two energy levels two energy levels of hydrogen atom that will be given as for delta e is equal to e f f indicate final minus e i but we know that this will be taken as for equation number 1 but we know that energy en is equal to minus 2.18 into 10 to the power of minus 18 by n square this will be in form of joules so en is equal to minus now it will be called e of final by this we can get delta e is equal to E of can be written as called minus 2.18 into 10 to the power of minus 18 by n f square n f square minus of minus you can write what minus of minus 2.18 into 10 to the power of minus 18 by n i square. Now this is about the one. Now this equation can be written as called delta E is equal to Minus of minus become plus. By that we can write 2.18 into 10 to the power of minus 18 by n i square minus 2.18 into 10 to the power of minus 18 n f square. Now here 2.18 into 10 to the power of minus 18 will be taken as common. Delta e is equal to delta e is equal to You can write for 2.18 into 10 to the power of minus 18 into 1 by n i square minus 1 by n e f square. This will be in the form of joules. This is what called delta e. But we know that delta e is equal to h nu. But we know that delta e is equal to h nu. By this we can write nu is equal to delta e by h. Nu is equal to delta e by h. Already we know the delta e by substitution. We are getting for nu is equal to the frequency 2.18 into 10 to the power of minus 18 divided by the value of h will be called 6.625 into 10 to the power of minus 34, which is called in joules into 1 by n i square minus 1 by n e f square. So this is about. It. Then by this uh, division, we are getting a value that will be known 3.29 into 3.29 into 10 to the power of 15, 1 by n i square minus 1 by n f square. This will be known as called nu. But we know that the relation between wave number to the nu will be known as called nu is equal to c into nu bar is our equation. Nu is equal to c into nu bar. The nu bar is equal to nu by c. Nu bar is equal to nu by c. By that we can get nu bar is equal to the nu will be going to be as called 2.329 into 10 to the power of 15 divided by c is called velocity of light 3 into 10 to the power of 10. 3 into 10 to the power of 10 or number called h meter per second into 1 by 
n square minus that will be called n i square minus 1 by n f square. Now this I am doing division we are getting 3 1 is equal to One point zero nine six seven seven into ten to the power of minus eight goes to the plus eight become seven into one by n i square minus one by n f square in the form of that will be known as called per meter. Or you can also write new bar is equal to you can write one lakh nine thousand six seventy seven into one by n i square minus one by n f square into per centimeter. So this is known as called as the equation given by the river, which is also going to derive by the Bohr's sign. So this is about the information according to this uh, explanation regarding to this uh, Bohr's spectrum that is called as hydrogen spectral lines uh, according to this uh, Bohr's theory. Okay. Okay. Now after the completion of the explanation of the Bohr for these spectral lines, we are going to take the next concept will be. Dual behavior of matter. Now we are going to take the concept will be called dual behavior of matter. What is meant by dual behavior means simply so that is said to be called the matter, the matter associated. with both particle nature and wave nature is called dual nature So dual nature nothing but is called having particle nature as well as known as called wave nature which is associated with the matter is known as called dual nature of the or dual behavior of the matter. Here we have already discussed that that is known as called the wave nature the wave nature he explained the wave nature explained the concept of diffraction and interference interference but particle nature particle nature explains the photoelectric effect photoelectric effect and then crampton effect so these things will be going to successfully explained by the wave nature will be corresponding to this it is called diffraction as well as called interference the particle nature will be corresponding to this photoelectric effect and crampton effect so these things are going to explain that means here the particle are going to be called matter will be associated with the both the wave nature as well as called particle nature here the wave nature and particle nature both will be present for microscopic objects like proton and electrons okay proton and electrons so that will be known as called as a dual behavior of matter now the dual behavior of matter can be going to consider regarding to this uh, particle said to be having both type of natures that will be known as called dual behavior now after this we are going to the next one will be known as called de broglie's hypothesis in order to explain the both the dual nature of particle that will be known as called wave nature as well as known as called particle nature successfully explained by de broglie 
The dual nature of the particle can be successfully explained in Bohr by considering about the electron as a reference. That is known as called De Broglie's hypothesis. Then, if you go to this De Broglie hypothesis, he is mainly concerned about the number one will be called Planck's quantum theory. Planck's quantum theory that will be known as called by having E is equal to Hc by lambda. This is taken as equation number one according to the Planck's quantum theory. Then we are having the next one Einstein mass energy equivalence Einstein mass energy equivalence E is equal to mc square take that as equation number 2 then from equation 1 and 2 from equation 1 and 2 you can write for mc square is equal to Hc by lambda. Mc square is equal to Hc by lambda. Then lambda is equal to Hc by mc square, which is equal to H by mc, which is equal to H by mc. Here, where c is velocity of light, where c is velocity of light. If this is applicable to, if this is applied to micro particle, micro particle, then velocity C is replaced by C is replaced by V. V is nothing but called velocity. Then the equation will be written as called lambda is equal to h by m v. Now, the product of mass into velocity will be known as called momentum that can be written as called h by p is an equation. So, this is the form of, this is called, this is de Broglie equation. This will be known as called de Broglie equation. Now, here, if you go to the, the additional point according to this one, you know that Kinetic energy Ke is equal to, you know that, half mv square. Yes, kinetic energy Ke is equal to half mv square. Now, from this we can write called v square is equal to 2 into Ke by m will be the form. Then, v is equal to under root of 2 Ke by m. Now substitute this uh, value of V in this equation that will be known as called equation number 3. Then from equation 3, from equation 3, we are getting a relation between wavelength to the kinetic energy, relation between wavelength to kinetic energy given as for lambda is equal to h by m into instead of this you can write called root of 2 ke by m this will be simplified as h by m will be written as for root m into root m into root of 2 ke divided by root m now root m root m gets cancelled then lambda is equal to h by under root of 2 into ke into m. So this is about the relation between wavelength to the kinetic energy of particles. So this is about called as a de Broglie hypothesis and this equation lambda is equal to h by m or h by p will be known as called de Broglie equation. Then from de Broglie equation we are getting a relation between Wavelength to the kinetic energy, wavelength to the kinetic energy, lambda is equal to h by under root of 2 ke into m. So, this is about known as called as a de Broglie's hypothesis. Now, here de Broglie considered that
De Broglie considered that the electron revolve in the orbit of fixed radius that will be having in the form of a wave that wave will be known as called stationary wave according to de broglie according to de broglie the electron revolving orbit the electron revolving around the nucleus in the form of wave that will be known as called a stationary wave. So that will be going to give us called. That means here it rules out the existence of definite tracks. This is about the one we are having the So like this, this will be known as called within the phase is going to consider. This will be known as called wave-like motion. Now we have the circumference. The circumference of this orbit, this orbit is equal to, is equal to Integral multiple of its wavelength is equal to integral multiple of its wavelength. Circumference can be written as called 2 pi r. 2 pi r is equal to n lambda. 2 pi r is equal to n lambda. Then lambda is equal to what you can write simply 2 pi r by n. Lambda is equal to 2 pi r by n. So this is the whole. Now here, this will be taken as part of the equation 1. Now we have the de Broglie equation. The de Broglie equation it is that lambda is equal to H by MB. This is known as called de Broglie equation, which is taken as equation number two. From equation one and two, what you can write will be lambda. Then H by MB is equal to you can write for two pi r by n, two pi r by n. Then we are having this equation on rear end. We are getting called MVR is equal to n H by two pi. So this will be known as called as a equation for angular momentum equation for angular momentum which is also going to successfully explain by the de broglie so by this you can say that de broglie hypothesis is in agreement with the both postulates de broglie hypothesis will be is in agreement with the both postulates so this is about the information got into this de broglie hypothesis and its relation to this adverse atomic theory okay thank you